NBA 2K20 tutorial number 47. Today I'm going to show you guys a smart technique to patch your advanced stats in the combine. Now in the backdrop, we will also be studying in detail two gameplays from two top combine centers and two top combine PGs. Alright, so if you enjoyed my videos and you would like to see more, make sure to click on the link above or below for my all 2K20 tutorials playlist where I guarantee you'll find more videos to help you improve your game and also plenty of content to help you do well in the combine. So in the backdrop right here, this is our gameplay for Jux Awkward and he's using a pop center here. So so far Awkward is on pace to make a top 35 center stat line but he mostly uses a pop center. So you guys can focus on his gameplay here. It's gonna be a six minute run so you can see what he does to do well. But let me show you guys, uh, talk to you guys about the technique I wanna tell you about. So this is what you gotta understand. In the combine, you are judged by advanced stats, right? So you're gonna come up with this, after say you play 40 games, okay? And after 40 games, you're gonna have a final advanced stats report. It's not a line, it's like an entire report, okay? Now, but the numbers of this report is based on your pro possession stat. So make sure you understand what that means, okay? You are not being judged by average per game stats. Those are absolutely 100% irrelevant. You are being judged by per 100 possession stats, okay? So imagine this, both sides of the court, let's just say imaginatively speaking, let's say you play 30 possessions on the defensive end in one game on average and 30%, 30 possessions on the offensive end. So per game, you're playing 60 possessions, okay? If you play 40 games at 60 possessions a game, your final combine report is made up of from your numbers coming from 2,400 possessions, okay, 60 times 40, okay? That's where your stats are coming from, your final, you know, combine advanced stats. It's from those 2,400 possessions. This is really important because when you understand that's how your numbers are calculated from your overall amount of possessions, let's say in for our example here, let's just say it's 2,400, you can control exactly how many of those possessions the 2400 you're facing good competition or bad competition now you're going to be like sam that's impossible how can i control how much bad competition i face in the combine you can actually do that allow me to explain in a combine game let's say game one you're playing against a really bad team all right and you're smart you know what you're doing so you purposely increase the pace of the game so you can play that bad team as many possessions as possible over 24 minutes because you understand this concept. So instead of playing the usual 60 possessions a game, you know you're facing this terrible team, you know, full of slashers. So you increase the pace of the game so you actually end up playing 120 possessions in that game. And you win it. So now game one's over and you have won but you have one playing 120 possessions against a really, really bad team. Now game two comes up and you're playing a legendary team, you know, a team full of pro players for some reason, okay? And you lose. So now your record is one and one, but you're smart. So when you play the very good team that you know was gonna beat down on you, or, you know, be a close game, you played a very, very slow pace, really slow. You take your time, you slow down the game, you you know, you muck it up. And then instead of playing the usual 60 possessions that game, you only played 50. Okay? Follow? Good. So now you're one and one. Your record says one and one. Is that great? No. But if you look into detail in the advanced stats, because you were smart enough to increase the pace in game one against a bad team, between your two games where you're one and one, you played a total of 170 possessions. But 120 of those were against bad players. The other 50 were against the great players. Now do you follow? Your final stats are coming out of your overall possessions divided by 100. So if you play a total in two games, 170 possessions but because you understand this right you you know like you know the juice like you know that you know the secret i guess 
then you actually artificially in a way because you manipulated the pace of the game of your 170 possessions 120 of them were against very bad players and bad players do stupid things you guys know your drtg your rebound rates all of that is important so if you play the bad team for 120 possessions they are just gonna miss a lot more throw up a lot of bad shots get you a lot of easy rebounds so that's gonna increase your stats now but because you were smart against a good team you're not gonna get great stats because that's what happens when you face great competition but you were smart enough to slow down the game to only 50 possessions right so you had less possessions to mess up less possessions for the other team to do well against you but because you were smart enough to jack up game 1 to 120 you have way better stats by the end of it because in the end if you were smart by the end maybe at least 65 to 70 percent of your overall possessions you were able to make sure those came from playing bad teams because every time you realize you're winning or you're blowing someone out you purposely played way more possessions over 24 minutes each game you are only allowed to face the other team 24 minutes yes but how many possessions you end up facing them that's up to you and you need to be mindful of this all the freaking time in the combine a win is a win a loss is a loss but there are ways to get the most out of a win and get the least negative effects out of an l if you get an l but you only played 30 possessions that is like the greatest l in combine history right now if you get a win and you can play 200 possessions that's not that's way better than a win where you only got you know 50 possessions that you gotta understand this like literally you can triple your production from a win because you're creating more possessions to play over 24 minutes like i have seen games where someone wins and their team scored a let's say this game i found a, I think it's either wreck or splash no no this was wreck okay so wreck elite world-class point guard i know oh, so shout out to tax so we switch footage here so this is tax center gameplay he's using an inside center so that's a lot different from awkward outside center and tack is also on pace to be a top 35 center right now so you guys can check out his inside center gameplay but back to red so red won the game right but he won the game and the score difference was 60 points he scored one or his team scored 133 and the other team scored 60. now that's a win if you win by 60 points like 133 points over 60 we're looking at how many possessions is that let's just say they scored a whole bunch of frees even then that's at least 50 possessions on offense and if it's equivalent and they don't have high turnover the the, the opposing team likely also have 50 possessions so that's like a maybe 110 possession blowout game that's a blowout game because you had 110 possessions versus a really bad team that's how you drive up your ortg your drtg your assist rates and you know your turnover rates you have to understand when you're losing slow down play as little possessions as possible when you're winning jack it up so you play as many possessions as possible this is advanced math and this is how advanced basketball math is calculated and this is how the combine is calculated for those of you who need a rrl example very easy every nba great every nba great they have majority of them 95 percent of the greatest nba players ever all have better regular season stats than they have playoff stats why this is because in the regular season you play worse teams and you in the playoffs you only play great teams but in the playoffs the most games you can play let's say it, even if every series goes to you know seven games never happened but let's say it does you're playing what how many series one two three four you're playing four series right so four series every game goes seven you're playing 28 games you're playing 28 playoff games but in the regular season you play 82 games and those are 28 games against you know playoff seeding teams in the regular season they're not all playoff seeding teams and some of them are bad teams that's why everybody's play all the nba grades their regular season stats are better because they are facing more possessions in the regular season versus you know bad teams but that's what you're going to do in the combine when you see bad competition you have to make sure you jack up the possession rate you need you don't need to score 100 it's actually not about that don't think that way you can explain to your team like oh we're gonna score 100 because you know more possessions but really is you want the bad team to miss way more because if they miss there's just gonna be tons of defensive rebounds and even if you don't grab them your drtg goes up because you get rewarded if a team stops but if the other team is just being bad are you really earning that team stop 
eh, not really. But are you going to be credited for it? Absolutely, because that's just how advanced stats work. That's why you want to jack up possessions, because you want the other team to miss way more. And obviously, you're going to find, as, as they miss more, you're going to play a lot of transition basketball. And the highest, most efficient offense right now in the combine is transition basketball, because people just can't defend fast breaks. That is also why I suggest to you guys, if you're defending against a fast break in the combine, just foul. Because the moment you foul, you force the other team to play half court offense. And the half court offense in combine is just way worse compared to transition offense. So make sure, if you can, foul. That's one development that I'm noticing. People are not fouling nearly enough in the combine, in transition. Because in the 2K league, if you watch and you watch in detail, we foul a lot in the fast break. Like when we're, work, like when we're working in 2K league, the bugs, like we, we know if there's a fast break, we might as well foul because it's just more fouls to give. Like you're not punished for it. I mean, until you foul, get into foul trouble, sure. But like, but the, because there's six minute games, like we still get six fouls. Like that's not realistic, but you know, you, you work with what advantage is given to you. You can foul way more. So make sure you're fouling on the fast break to force the other team to play half court offense as much as possible. All right? So if you have questions about this possession idea, ask, because you need to understand this. The players who understand this is gonna make top 35 because they are gonna manipulate their possessions, you know, to just to be better numbers. Now, that's not even cheating. That's just actually smart basketball because if you're blowing on a team, why would you let the foot out the gas? You literally have to play as hard as possible. Not so much to score, but more so to defend. Because it's so good if you face a bad team and they just keep missing. Those, like having, creating misses is the best advanced stat you can get. Like if you can make the other team miss, like you're winning. And on offense, if you're blowing someone out, you don't even need to take that many shots. Just share the shots around. It doesn't matter who scored. Because everybody is rewarded when somebody scores, right? You're really only punished when you miss. So try not to miss, but if your team scores, it's fine. And then on defense, Everybody on defense is rewarded as long as the other team misses. Against a bad team, they're just gonna miss for you. And if you're blowing them out by 30-25, they're just gonna play lazy. And when they're playing lazy, they're doing you favors. That's what you gotta do. So make sure you understand this. I'm gonna give you the short version one last time. You are judged based on the amount of post. You're judged by the stats that comes from your overall amount of possessions. No one cares about your per game stats. Your per game stats are absolutely irrelevant. Your points per game, assists per game, turnovers per game, and any of that is irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. Obviously, a lot of turnovers is bad, but you're not being judged as, hey, let's say tag. Oh, hey, when the 2K League, when the advanced map is done, it's not like, oh, tag sucks. He averages free turnovers game. Let's say if he does. The, the, the language is not like that. The mathematical language is more like, oh, per 100 possession, tag turns the ball over five times per 100 possessions. That's how the lingo and analysis is done. That's why your per game stats is absolutely irrelevant. And you actually, unless you're crazy and you, you know, hand jot down every game, you are not even going to know what your per 100 possession stats is because not every game happens to be 100 possessions. So none of you really know what your per 100 possession stats are. Now I know because I know how to do the math and some games I'm crazy enough to jot it down so I can calculate it. But my point is you will never know. So stop looking at your per game averages. Those are irrelevant. It's your possession that matters. But what you can control is you can control how many possessions you played against weak competition to jack up your per 100 possession stats. Okay, I'm sure you get it. I'll review it on Twitter if you need to, but please understand this because this will be the difference between you making the combine or not. Because if you're a guy that knows this, then you're gonna make sure 70% of your possession is against bad teams bad players. And if you don't know this, you end up being a guy that, you know, it's 50-50. Half the time you're facing good players, half the time you're facing bad players. The guy who knows this and is making sure he faces bad players 70% of the time, possession-wise, it's gonna smoke you. 
because he knows what he's doing. He's playing bad competition 20% of the time more than you, possession wise. Because nothing is base per minute. No advanced stats is calculated by that in the 2K League Combine. Okay? As always, thanks for coming by. Hope this helped you out. And I'll speak to you guys again very soon.